any one of these things, if you do not organize carefully, uh, can really torpedo the success of an outsourced testing effort. So, you know, these, I would say, these, these are the critical uh, seven things that uh, you know, if you're going to embark in outsourced testing, make sure that you've thought through each of these seven things as part of your plan and your strategy. Okay. So to briefly recap, before we go into the Q&A session, um, the uh, life cycle choices can create different organizational challenges, and I've outlined some of those. Uh, it's important that when, when we organize uh, for, for our testing efforts that we think about what's the life cycle, what are the organizational challenges associated with it, how am I going to overcome those. They all can be overcome, or at least managed. But if they are not managed, then they will become a, uh, a source of ongoing issues and problems. Uh, skills is something else that you have to look at when you're organizing your team. Um, and if you're doing distributed testing, you have to look at the way that the skills availability will differ from one region to the next, understanding, again, that skills triangle that I uh, talked about earlier. Uh, decide on specialization versus generalization as a organizing principle for your team, or or you can have some specialization and some generalization as well. But figure out how you're going to use those different options and the pros and cons associated with them. How will you manage the potential disadvantages? If you're going to use non-testers, then again, how do we create a, a work environment, organizational work environment, in which those non-testers can be profitably employed? And in a way that's satisfying to them as well as to you, because you don't want them going going away from the test organization saying, you know, God, what a, what a mess! I don't ever want to get involved in that again. Oh, <laughs> that's okay. Um, for those of you not in the room, we had a little pop-up reminder here. That, um, so proper use of non-testers, uh, testing centers of excellence uh, as a, a particular way of organizing a specialized sub-team within the larger testing organization. Uh, use of testing service providers to give you additional options, particularly things like specialized skills, specialized infrastructure, peak workload, and so forth. So these are all things to think about as you're organizing your testing, you're putting together your, your test organization. And if you if you consider all of these issues and effectively manage them, then you should be able to put together a very effective and efficient test organization. Conversely, if you fail to manage some of these things, they can prove to be real uh, irritants at best, and in some cases, real obstacles, maybe not insurmountable obstacles, but major obstacles to getting your, your test work done. So I'd encourage you on your projects to, uh, to think through all of these. Okay, so as usual, I will uh, put the um, advertisement up here as we go into the Q&A session. That concludes the presentation as a whole. Uh, so at this point, I'm going to take uh, questions from the audience. Uh, for those of you on the phone, you can use the uh, webinar Q&A feature. And uh, we'll start with our uh, anonymous, undisclosed host here. Uh, if there are any questions, happy to take them. I had a, had a question about the the agile slide that you, that you had and talked through some of the issues mm -hmm. there. Um, those are the examples that you gave were primarily around uh, the human issues of implementing these models. Correct. It's not necessarily inherent problems in the model itself, but yes. it's the problems that people have trying to stick to those rules or that they fall back on old habits, et cetera. I just wanted to clarify Yes, yeah. So, that, so for those of you if you couldn't hear on the phone, um, so, you know, is the source is the source of the challenges in Agile primarily human issues or, or political issues, if you will, or is, are they inherent in the um, model? Uh, and the ones that I'm talking about here are they're, they're primarily issues of, um, say, improper or thoughtless is a harsh word, but let me just use it for 
lack of a better one, a thoughtless implementation of the model. Right? So either either people have deliberately left out part of the model because they say, well, you know, I, I like I like this agile stuff, but the forty hour work week, no way I'm not gonna commit to that. So, you know, I, I want I want to be agile and I want to work my team like dogs. You know, um, so that's that's deliberately improperly implementing the model, and then that's going to result in things like overcommitment and so forth, right? Then there's the stuff that's just just thoughtless, like 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 the silo problem, right? That when you're working in an environment where there are a lot of iterations going on in parallel on things that have to talk to each other, you got to deal with the interoperability and system integration problem, right? And so that. Uh, that transcends the question of the development model that's going to be used for any given application, right? So it's, it's literally outside the scope of the agile development methodology, right? But so some of these things are just, you know, failing to deal with things that are problems that are outside the scope of the methodology. Some are improper implementation of the methodology. There are some that are inherent in agile itself, for example, related to the uh, typical um, level of of documentation that's being gathered and, and how to make sure that that's optimized for a testing team. And I did a whole webinar on Agile testing challenges, and if you, if you want, you can find the recorded version of that on the RBCS website. But there, there are some challenges that are inherent even in a proper implementation of Agile, and just like there are uh, problems that are inherent even in a proper implementation of a V model. I mean, every life cycle has its pros and cons including from a testing point of view. So, great question. Another in the back? I just wanted to add, um, one thing I didn't, see, didn't hear you talk about is that there's also this issue with Agile that I found that there's a certain level of expectation. Um, mm -hmm. People have this you know, big idea of what Agile is supposed to be. It's supposed to be fast. I can change this. I can do that. And um, what we found is, our, especially when we come to deal with our, our business proponents, is that they really don't have the same understanding of how it really works. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 very true. I I was at a a uh, defense industry conference not too long ago. Now, now think about this is defense, right? Um, and one of the speakers started talking about Agile, and I usually try to refrain from doing this. I, you know, I mean, I'm, I, I give a lot of public presentations myself, and I hate it when somebody jumps up and tries to pull the loose thread on the sweater, you know. But he, he was talking about Agile and talking about Agile, and it just didn't seem to be as well thought through as it could have been. So I did the obnoxious thing, stuck my hand up in the air and said, could you define for me exactly what you mean by Agile here, because we see a lot of our clients got a lot of variability in what their expectations are. Well, anyway, this resulted in a series of back and forth between me and this speaker that finally he, he came out and said, well, basically the only thing that we can really find that people need when they say Agile is faster. <laughs> you know? so, so, yeah, that's exactly what you're talking about, right? It's all this expectation thing. They hear Agile, they think, oh, faster cheaper implementation of the same set of features I want anyway, right? In other words, it's free lunch. And I think that's, I think that's huge, yeah. Uh, I don't know that that's anything that necessarily is an organizational challenge for testing, right? So it's kind of outside the scope of this particular presentation, but there's this whole kind of um, political issue, right, of how, how within an organization you effectively manage what you will and will not be able to do with a given set of resources in a given period of time and to what level of quality. And you know, there's there's no there are no magic solutions to that, right? Agile is is magic. Do we have other questions? Yeah, please. So I'm confused with your uh, system testing applied uh, group with uh, other methodologies. Oh system integration? System this integration one? Yeah. Applied. Uh -huh. so I understand sequential testing, agile methodology, iterative methodology, these are all methodologies which we can pick and choose or we can combine or customize mm -hmm. uh, 